Guys, after waiting through several unstable builds, we finally have what looks like the strongest and most optimized release of GameHub Lite so far. This is the brand new GameHub Lite version 5.1.3, and in the last few days the developers have pushed multiple crucial fixes, improvements, and restorations that completely transform the experience. In today's video, I am going to walk you through everything that has changed, everything that has been updated, and most importantly, the real differences between all the different variant builds of this version so you know exactly which one you should install on your device. So let's get started. Version 5.1.3 is built on the more stable GameHub like V4 codebase instead of the older V3 foundation. This alone makes a huge difference because V4 was significantly more reliable. By rebuilding the latest version on top of V4. The developers have brought back the stability that was missing in the early V5 versions. Every core feature now behaves exactly the way it should. Many people don't realize this but shifting the entire foundation from V3 to V4 solves half the problems from the root. The EMU Ready compatibility badge has also been restored. This small detail makes a huge difference because the badge helps you understand instantly if a game, configuration, or container is actually compatible with your device. Earlier this badge was missing because the backend was outdated. But now the app uses the new Enya Ready worker servers. This not only makes the compatibility data more accurate but also improves privacy since the new servers collect far less user data compared to older services. Another improvement is the cleanup of permissions. Many users used to see a pointless notification permission pop-up that served no real function. This pop-up has finally been removed correctly at a system level so you no longer get interrupted or forced into granting an unnecessary permission. At the same time, an important permission has been restored, the microphone. Some games and emulators require microphone access, and earlier this permission was accidentally disabled. The new update restores it so those titles can function normally again. Now let's talk about the part everyone always asks for, the different APK versions. Many users see names like Antutu Alt, Antutu, Ladashi, PUBG, Original, and wonder what the actual difference is. All these variants are the same app internally, but each one spoofs a different package identity to force your device into a performance profile. This is an old but extremely effective Android performance boost technique. The Antutu version pretends to be the Antutu benchmark app. Many phones automatically unlock maximum CPU, GPU, and thermal performance modes whenever Antutu is detected. This gives you the highest short burst performance that your device can provide. But if your device blocks the regular Antutu spoof, there is also an alternate version known as Alt Antutu which uses a different package name to bypass detection while giving the same boost. The Ladashi variant focuses on devices from Chinese manufacturers such as Xiaomi, Oppo, Vivo, and Realme. These brands often optimize their sustained performance modes around the Ladashi benchmark. If you want any of those devices, Ladashi can sometimes outperform Antutu. The PUBG variant is designed for long, stable gaming sessions. Instead of short benchmark style boosts, your device switches into a sustained gaming mode which balances temperature, stability and GPU scheduling for continuous gameplay. This is useful when you want long, stable container sessions without sudden throttling. And finally, the original version is the clean, non-spoofed build. This one behaves like a normal app with no artificial performance mode. It is the most stable and safest option for anyone who prefers default system behavior without forcing a specific performance profile. With all these changes combined, GameHub Lite 5.1.3 becomes one of the most optimized and reliable versions we have received in recent months. It brings back missing features, fixes critical bugs, improves privacy, enhances launcher compatibility and gives users the flexibility to choose the performance profile that suits their device best. If you want peak performance, choose Antutu or PUBG. If you want a Chinese device, choose Ladashi. And if you want maximum stability, choose the original version. This is everything that has changed, everything that has been fixed, and everything that has been improved in the newest GameHub Lite update. So guys, first, the latest GameHub Lite from the official website. I am using the Intuita build, but the setup is the same for all versions. Once you install and open the app, you'll notice it no longer asks for any unnecessary permissions or notification access, which makes the startup completely smooth. On the main screen, you'll see the Steam option where you can log in and play your Steam games. But for this video I'll focus only on offline PC games. Simply tap on import PC games and give file access permission so the emulator can detect your game folder. As soon as you add your game, GameHub Lite will automatically install the correct drivers based on your device. So just wait a few moments for that process to finish. After the auto setup is done, open the PC settings section. I'll start by showing the best optimized settings for MediaTek and Mali devices because those users usually face the most performance issues. These settings are designed to give stable performance and run almost every supported game smoothly. 
After that, I'll also show the recommended settings for other devices like Snapdragon and higher-end chipsets. So guys, once you reach the settings menu, you can start by selecting the resolution that best matches your device. After that, avoid changing anything under the general section. Scroll down to the compatibility options and select the latest Proton version for maximum stability. Then move to the translation perms and choose either compatible mode or performance mode depending on what your game supports. If the game is well optimized, you can even switch to extreme mode for higher performance. After this, scroll down and set the GPU driver option to use system driver. Now open the DXVK settings and choose 1.11.1 underscore Mali underscore fix, which is specially designed for MediaTek and Mali devices. In the VKD3D section, keep the default option that is already selected. And remember, Mali devices currently support only DirectX 11, not DirectX 12. Once you apply every Everything. Your setup is complete. Congratulations, you're ready to play. So guys, now it's time for the Snapdragon settings. First, open the general section and select your resolution. I recommend using 960 by 544 because it gives the best balance of clarity and performance. After that, go to the compatibility section and select Proton as your compatibility mode. Since I'm giving you the best possible setup, Move into the translation perms and switch to extreme mode. Make sure to enable the multi-thread option as well because this single toggle can boost your FPS dramatically and make gameplay much smoother. Next, scroll down to the GPU driver section. If you are using a Snapdragon 8 Elite, stick with the system driver or use the 83 Gen 5 driver for maximum stability. But if you're using a mid-range Snapdragon device like the Poco F5 or anything from Snapdragon 480 up to Snapdragon HN3, then set the GPU driver to turnip. This driver performs the best on the majority of Snapdragon phones. Now move to the DXDK section. The ideal version depends on your game. Most titles run best on DXDK 2.3.1 Async or 2.4.1 Async, so you can select either of those for general gaming. But since I'm playing just cause 4, this game supports DXDK 2.6.2 and 2.6.1 extremely well, so I'm choosing one of those. Some games even benefit from the newer 2.7.1 version, which delivers the highest performance, but again, it depends on compatibility. After this, if you're playing a DirectX 12 game, you must go to the VKD3D section and select VKD3D 2.14 Proton. This is what enables proper DX12 support on Snapdragon devices. Once all of this is set, your configuration is complete and you're fully ready to play any PC game on Android with the best possible performance. If the video helps, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.